the key to getting a converse out of a property or a theorem is to understand that every property, every theorem has a, um, has a premise and therefore a conclusion that you draw off of that premise. Okay? The converse is all about switching those. Right? Switching them. So what's the premise? What did we start with when we drew this thing? And the answer is the premise is parallel lines. You start with those guys. Once you start with them, the premise you then conclude is, oh, when you draw the transversals, they do this funny thing where the ratios are always the same. Okay, that's the conclusion, right? It, uh, wrong color. It, it has equal ratios. That's, that's the key, okay? So here comes my converse. You want to write it with me? If the ratios that we're talking about, if the ratios of intercepts on transversals, you could say are preserved, but you might as well, at least in this phrase, you might as well just say are equal. Okay? If that is true, then lines are parallel. Right? And those lines are the ones that form each other. You used transversal. No, you said something wrong. You used transversal as a verb, I think. Yeah, yeah, you were kind of missing this oh, phrase, which has some importance in this in this conversation. Okay. Okay, now, your, your phrase was kind of like, if cat, then dog. Like, uh, <laughs> it was no, you know, it was kind of a, it was kind of a, it was a, um, can you cut that out? No, leave it in. It was kind of this sentence, like it's, um, this sentence never. Yeah, okay. Now, question, question. Property, it's true. By the way, like, we don't just have to know, like, we, we looked at it experimentally. We looked at it scientifically. There's no problem with that. But as mathematicians, you have better, and I say better in that they are more certain, uh, you have better tools to prove that this is true. I'll let you have a think for a second. I'm not going to force you to. But it is not that hard to prove what you're trying to, um, to say here, right? I'll give you a big clue. Where in recent times have you thought about those guys? Don't say anything, just you think about it, okay? Like what direction would, does that lean you in, okay? Now, my question at the moment is, is this true? Is this true, okay? Now, now the problem is it is not, it is not. And with your ruler in hand, I'm going to really quickly draw you some transversals where the intercepts are quite clearly in equal ratio, okay? But there's lines that ain't parallel, okay? You ready? It's really easy. You can draw this. Remember we started with like a transversal. Okay, we divided it up and I, I chose to divide it up so that you would get a nice neat ratio off the bat. Okay, so if I just divide this up really, really obviously so that it's equal. Okay. Now I'm going to go like this. Oh, I missed. Yeah, yeah. Are these lines parallel? <laughs> Depends if I say it's a scale or not. Okay, um, now, here comes my second transversal, right? Okay. Now, you can go ahead, and it's really not that difficult, um, to find such a point that those intercepts over here are exactly twice as long as those intercepts over here, right? What ratio are they in? One to one. One to one, obviously. Also, one to one. I have intercepts on these transversals that are in the same ratio, but those lines are not parallel, okay? So here, the property works, but it's converse. It's busted, you know, on myth, myth busters, they're like, no, nope, I've disproved it. Disproving things, like if you want to prove something, the easiest way is to set about to disprove it. And if you can find a counterexample, you only need to find one counterexample, it's out, okay? And it's really quite simple to do. Like I said, this is the most common example of a place where the property um, does not imply its converse, which is why I picked out this example. Um, it's also really worth looking at because this line, this word here, intercepts, and its particular meaning as um, an interval that's been sliced off by other lines, um, it's really, really important. You will see it, for example, yeah, not bad, um, here. 
So I've drawn a circle, right? What are those lines that join parts, different parts of the circumference? What are they called? Starts with C. These are chords. Um, if they went on forever, we would call them secants. Okay. Now what you've got here is one, two, three, four little intervals that have been cut off by this circumference and by this point of intersection. Okay. A, B, C, D. Okay. Now, a really, really curious thing will happen. You can actually go ahead and do this. Draw a good circle. Put some um, chords on it anywhere you like so long as they intersect. And what you will find is this. Huh. Now, now, this is all about, this is a statement completely about intercepts. The intercepts of intersecting chords in a circle, right? And so, even though you're like, I'm used to thinking of this as a point, thinking of it as an interval is not a, um, it's not a backwater use of the word. It's actually quite common. We've just been used to other contexts, okay? So you need to get used to seeing that word and thinking of, thinking of these or thinking of these. They are also intercepts, okay? Yeah. Ah, so these guys are parallel, right? but this theorem is meant to be saying about something about these lines, right? Oh the lines God. that create the intercepts. One, two, three, right? So those are the lines which I am purporting are parallel. Um, that's at least what this actual property, which is true, is talking about. It's talking about the ones that create the intercepts so which I'm comparing. To do that without having a <coughs> yes. So this is, the, this is the special case that disproves it. If you put a, a whole bunch of other ones, you will get different ratios. Right? But for this one, the ratios are the same, which is what we're trying to show here.